your typography choices can make or break your graphic designs. Sometimes the choices are very subtle and can make big differences. And here's our first example, and like everything in today's video, I've taken this from a resource website. The first tip that can help you make better typography choices is to ask yourself, what is the most important thing on your design? Is it the image at the top here? Is it the text on the left? Or is it the text on the right? As the design is at the moment, it's pretty disorganized and there isn't a clear hierarchy. The image is important, but it's not the most important thing on my design. And so I'm gonna start by adding a section to illustrate the importance on the left edge with regard to the typography. This is a good start, but obviously there isn't a clear hierarchy structure within the typography itself. And again, this goes back to the importance logic that we want to take for our designs. The heading is the important part here. This company offers quality services, so let's make that a bit larger. Now then, you might be saying to yourself, let's go even further with hierarchy and increase the thickness of the heading and possibly the subheadings below as well. And we can do that, of course. You will see how much more impacting the design can be right here. The next choice I want to make is to make sure proximity is used to group together certain elements that are related to one another. So the three points at the bottom should be neatly grouped. And then to add further reinforcement to the heading, I've got a line underneath and a graphic that supports the notion of quality services, the trophy. Literal graphics like this trophy do work on designs like this. But like I said before, I do stay away from this in the logo designing because that's a different game altogether. Here, on a design like this, they quickly help to express and support a textual statement. But what about the text at the bottom right? Well here, I just neatened up the typography a little bit, made it smaller so it's less dominant, which again goes back to the important logic, and then added another literal graphic to support the notion of conversation. This is just a quick example, but the main tip from this first section in today's video is to identify importance on a design and then use hierarchy and other principles to work the typography into important structures. This next design is a web page, and this is going to truly show you how very small and subtle changes can be applied to a design. Now we're looking at the left edge with the modern architecture heading and then the body text below. Now let's say that we actually want to keep the thickness and the font for this heading, and that's because we just think it works well on this design. Or we can then maybe just drop the body text from the same black color down to a lighter gray. Yes, this is very, very subtle, but it already creates a sense of contrast and thus highlights hierarchy and importance. Something else quite subtle that people do forget is leading. Now, nine times out of 10, the default leading for body text will be too tight. And that makes the text come across as cramped and just not good for reading experiences. So I'm just gonna increase that leading a little bit. And now the body text has more space between each line. Again, very subtle, but effective. Then I'm looking at the right edge of the body text and how each word creates white space. This is also known as the rag. Often playing around with the word orders and line lengths is a great way to do something on body text that makes it more visually appealing. And that's because as designers, we want to strive for a neat rag edge on body text. Making a small adjustment like so does help with little touches which do make a big difference. Also line length is important. So say for example, I decided to make mine here longer you can see that it doesn't feel right compared to how it was before, breaking into the white space that this design has. And often white space is the best partner with typography. They kind of work together to build harmony on a design. Now here's a really cool tip for those of you who are logo designers. It's all well and good grabbing a font for your logo and using it if you have the license, of course. But to really make a unique logo, especially if it's strictly typographic, we need to aim to customize the typography. One neat way to do this is to open up the glyphs panel in say Illustrator. Now I'm using the typeface Crimson Pro here, which I do adore. And I'm just browsing over the glyphs to see what might or might not work for the logo. Of course, it's paramount your choices need to reflect the brief and aim at the target audience. But this D here with the strike through it really does appeal to me right here, right now. And on further research, it seems this D is Old English, but also it's seen in Slovak and other languages too. So when using glyphs in this way, do make sure they're relevant to your design and the brief, of course. Now you can also change the thickness and the structures of your typography by using the width tool and other elements, but make sure to keep the same style consistently throughout the typography. 
But yeah, just look how neat this looks now with just one small touch. I do like how the strike is in the middle of the logo itself, which does create balance. But also importantly, it creates a sense of originality and uniqueness. This design is so much more brandable than the original typography solution. And I could actually imagine this on maybe a rum bottle brand or something like that. So as you can see, typography doesn't need to be complicated. You can make subtle changes to help express a message of a design that aren't too elaborate. But if you want to see how to elevate graphic designs with small changes on different designs, just click the video on screen. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.